Hi, I'm Lucy. Thank you for joining me for another video. And if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to believe in magic, in beauty, in friendship, and freedom, believe in the Black Stallion. Biggest, and the blackest, and the strongest, and most beautiful horse that ever was. Friend Walter Farley's timeless classic, Whose Time Has Come. The story of a legendary horse who could only be tamed by a young boy's love. Together they survive a shipwreck. The Black Stallion, Chapter 4 The Wildest of All Wild Creatures. The next day, Alex set out to obtain more of the carrageen. As he neared the rocks, he saw the stallion standing silently beside a huge boulder. Not a muscle twitched in his black body. It was as if an artist had painted the black on white stone. Alec climbed down into a small hollow and paused to look out over the rocks below. Suddenly he heard the stallion scream. More piercing, more blood curdling than he had ever heard it before. He looked up. The black was on his hind legs his teeth barred. Then, with a mighty leap, he shot away from the boulder towards Alec. Swiftly he came, faster with every magnificent stride. He was almost on top of him when he thundered to a halt and reared again. Alec jumped to the side, tripped on a stone, and fell to the ground. High above him, the black's legs pawed the air and then descended three yards in front of him. Again he went up and down, again and again he pounded. The ground on which Alec lay shook from the force of his hooves. The stallion was frothing at the mouth and his crazed eyes never left the ground in front of him. Gradually his pounding lessened and then stopped. He raised his head high, and his whistle thrilled through the air. He shook his head and slowly moved away, his nostrils trembling. Alec regained his feet and cautiously made his way towards the torn earth. His brain flooded with confusion. There in front of him he saw the strew parts of a long yellowish-black body and the diamond-shaped head of a snake, crushed and lifeless. He stood still. The suddenness of discovering life other than the black and himself on the island astounded him. Sweat broke out on his forehead as he realized what a snake bite would have meant, suffering and perhaps death. Dazed, he looked at the stallion just a few feet away. Had the black killed the snake to save him? Was the stallion beginning to understand that they needed each other to survive? Slowly, the boy walked towards the black. The stallion's mane swept in the wind. His muscles twitched. His eyes moved restlessly. But he stood his ground as the boy approached. Alec wanted the horse to understand that he would not hurt him. Cautiously, he reached a hand toward the stallion's head. The black drew it back as far as he could without moving. Alec stepped closer and to the side of him. Gently, he touched him from an instant. The stallion did not move. Again, Alec attempted to touch the savage head. The black reared and shook a little. Alec said soothingly, Steady, black boy. I wouldn't hurt you. The stallion quivered, then reared again and broke. One hundred yards away, 
He suddenly stopped and turned. Alec gazed at him, standing there so still, his head raised high in the air. We'll get out of this somehow, Black, working together, he said determinedly. Alec walked back to the top of the rocks and again began his descent. He made his way carefully down to the water level. Cautiously he looked before he stepped. Where there was one snake, there might be more. Reaching the bottom, he once again filled his shirt full of the moss and made his way back. High above him, he could see the black looking out over the cliffs, his mane whipping in the wind. When he reached the top, the stallion was still there. He followed a short distance behind as Alec went back to the spring. Days passed and gradually the friendship between the boy and the black grew. The stallion now came to his call and let Alec stroke him while he gazed with wondering eyes. One night Alec sat within the warm glow of the fire and watched the stallion munching on the carrageen beside the pool. He wondered if the stallion was as tired of the carrageen as he. Alec had found that if he boiled it in the turtle shell, it formed a gelatinous substance which tasted a little bit better than the raw moss. A fish was now a rare delicacy to him. The flame's shadows reached out and cast eerie ghost-like patterns on the black's body. Alex's eyes glowed and his face became grim as thoughts rushed through his brain. Should he try it tomorrow? Did he dare attempt to ride the black? Should he wait a few more days? Go ahead, tomorrow. Don't do it, go ahead. The fire burned low, then smoldered. Yet Alec sat beside the fire, his eyes fixed on the blacker than night figure beside the spring. The next morning he woke from a fitful slumber to find the sun high above. Hurriedly, he ate some of the carrageen. Then he looked for the black, but he was not in sight. Alec whistled, but no answer came. He walked toward the hill. The sun blazed down, and the sweat rolled from his body. If it would only rain, the last week had been like an oven on the island. When he reached the top of the hill, he saw the black at one end of the beach. Again he whistled, and this time there was an answering whistle as the stallion turned his head. Alec walked up the beach toward him, his face resolute. The black stood still as he approached. He went cautiously up to him and placed a hand on his neck. Steady there, boy, he murmured as the warm flesh quivered slightly beneath his hand. The stallion showed neither fear nor hate of him. His large eyes were still turned on the sea. For a moment Alec stood with his hand on the black's neck. Then he walked toward a sand dune a short distance away. The stallion followed. He stepped up the side of the dune his left hand in the horse's thick mane. The black's ears pricked forward. His eyes followed the boy nervously. Some of the savageness returned to them. His muscles twitched. For a moment, Alec was undecided what to do. Then his hands grabbed the mane tighter and he threw himself on the black's back. For a second, the stallion stood motionless. Then he snorted and plunged. The sand went flying as he doubled in the air. Alec felt the mighty muscles heave. Then he was flung through the air, landing heavily on his back. Everything went dark. Alec regained consciousness to find something warm against his cheek. Slowly he opened his eyes. The stallion was pushing him with his head. 
Alec tried moving his arms and legs and found them bruised, but not broken. Wearily, he got to his feet. The wildness and savageness had once more disappeared in the black. He looked as though nothing had happened. Alec waited for a few minutes, then once again led the stallion to the sand dune. His hand grasped the horse's mane, but this time he only laid the upper part of his body on the stallion's back while he talked soothingly into his ear. The black flirted his ear back and forth as he glanced backward with his black eyes. See? I'm not going to hurt you, fella, Alec murmured as he patted him and let him feel his weight. After a few minutes, Alec cautiously slid on his back. Once again, the stallion snorted and sent the boy flying through the air. He picked himself up from the ground, slower this time. But when he had rested, he whistled for the black again. The stallion moved toward him. Alec determinedly stepped on the sand dune and once again let the black feel his weight. Gently he spoke into a large ear. It's me, black boy. Whoa, fella. He slid onto the stallion's back. One arm slipped around his neck as he half reared. Then, like a shot from a gun, the black broke down the beach. His action shifted and his huge strides seemed to make him fly through the air. Alec clung to the stallion's mane for his life. The wind screamed by and he couldn't see. Suddenly the black swerved and headed up the hill. He reached the top and then down. The spring was a blur as they whipped by. To the rocks he raced and then the stallion made a wide circle, his speed never diminishing. Down through a long ravine he rushed. Alec's blurred vision made out a black object in front of them. And as a flash, he remembered the deep gully that was there. He felt the stallion gather himself. Instinctively, he leaned forward and held the black firm and steady with his hands and knees. Then they were in the air, sailing over the black hole. Alec slid, slid a little when they landed, but recovered himself in time to keep from falling. Once again, the stallion reached the beach, his hoof beats regular and rhythmic on the white sand. The jump had helped greatly in clearing Alex's mind. He leaned closer to the stallion's ear and kept repeating, Steady, black boy, steady. The stallion seemed to glide over the sand, and then his speed began to lessen. Alec kept talking to him. Slower and slower ran the black. Gradually, he came to a stop. The boy released his grip from the stallion's mane, and his arms encircled the black's neck. He was weak with exhaustion. He was in no condition for such a ride. Wearily, he slipped to the ground. Never had he dreamed a horse could run so fast. The stallion looked at him, his head held high, his large body only slightly covered with sweat. That night, Alec lay wide awake, his body aching with pain, but his heart pounding with excitement. He had written the black. He had conquered this wild, unbroken stallion with kindness. He felt sure that from that day on, the black was his, his alone. But for what? Would they ever be rescued? Would he ever see his home again? Alec shook his head. He had promised himself he wouldn't think of that anymore. The next day he mounted the black again. The horse half reared, but didn't fight him. Alec spoke softly in his ear, and the black stood still. Then Alec touched him slightly on the side, and he walked 
a long, loping stride. Far up the beach they went, then Alec tried to turn him by shifting his weight and gently pushing the stallion's head. Gradually, the horse turned. Alec took a firmer grip on his long mane and pressed his knees tighter against the large body. The stallion broke out of his walk into a fast trot. The wind blew his mane back into the boy's face. The stallion's stride was effortless, and Alex found it easy to ride. Halfway down the beach, he managed to bring him back again to a walk, then to a complete stop. Slowly, he turned him to the right, then to the left, and then around in a circle. Fatiguing hours passed as Alec tried to make the black understand what he wanted him to do. The sun was going down rapidly as he walked the stallion to the end of the beach. He turned and stood still. A mile of smooth white sand stretched before them. Suddenly the stallion bolted, almost throwing him to the ground. He picked up speed with amazing swiftness. Faster and faster he went. Alec hung low over his neck, his breath coming in gasps. Down the beach the stallion thundered. Tears from the wind rolled down Alex's cheeks. Three quarters of the way, he tried to check the black speed. He pulled back on the flowing mane. Whoa, black, he yelled, but his words were whipped away in the wind. Swiftly, the stallion neared the end of the beach, and Alex thought that his breathtaking ride of yesterday was to be repeated. He pulled back harder on the mane. Suddenly, the black's pace lessened. Alex flung one arm around the stallion's neck. The black shifted into his fast trot, which gradually became slower and slower until Alex had him under control. Overjoyed, he turned to him and rode him over the hill to the spring. Together, they drank the cool, refreshing water. With the days that followed, Alex's mastery over the black grew greater and greater. He could do almost anything with him. The savage fury of the unbroken stallion disappeared when he saw the boy. Alex rode him around the island and raced him down the beach, marveling at the giant strides and the terrific speed. Without realizing, Alex was improving his horsemanship until he had reached the point where he was almost a part of of the black as they tore along. One night Alex sat beside his campfire and stared into the flames that reached hungrily into the air. His knees were crossed and his elbows rested heavily upon them. His chin was cupped in his two hands. He was deep in thought. The Drake had left Bombay on a Saturday, the 15th of August. The shipwreck had happened a little over two weeks later, perhaps on the second of Saturday. He had been on the island exactly 19 days. That would make it approximately the 21st of September. By now his family must think him dead. He doubled his fist. He had to find a way out. A ship just had to pass the island sometime. Daily he had stood on top of the hill peering out to sea, frantically hoping to sight a boat. For the first time Alec thought of the approaching cold weather. The heat had been so intense upon the island since his arrival that it had never entered his mind that it would soon get cold. Would his shelter offer him enough protection? He had used every available piece of wood on the island to reinforce it. But would that be enough? How cold would it get? Alec looked up at the clear starlit sky. He rose to his feet and walked toward the hill. The black, standing beside the spring, raised his head and whistled when he saw him. He followed Alec as he climbed to the top. The boy's eyes swept the dark, rolling sea. White foamed swells rushed in and rolled up the, to the beach. The stallion, too, seemed to be watching, his eyes staring into the night. 
his ears pricking forward. An hour passed, then they turned and made their way back to camp. A wind started blowing from out of the west. Alex stoked the fire for the night, then crawled wearily into his shelter. He was tired, for he had spent most of the day gathering carriaging. He stretched out and was soon asleep. He didn't know how long he had been sleeping, but suddenly the black's shrill scream awakened him. Sleepily he opened his eyes. The air had grown hot. Then he heard a crackling noise above. His head jerked up towards. The top of his shelter was on fire. Flames were creeping down the sides. Alec leaped to his feet and rushed outside. A gale was sweeping the island and instantly he realized what had happened. Sparks from his campfire had been blown upon the top of the shelter and had easily set fire to the dry wood. He grabbed the turtle shell and ran to the spring. Filling it, he ran back and threw the water on the flames. The black pranced nervously beside the spring, his nostrils quivering, while Alec rushed back and forth with his little turtle shell full of water, trying to keep the fire from spreading. But it had a good start, and soon it had enveloped the whole shelter. Smoke filled the air. The boy and the horse were forced to move farther and farther back. Soon the two nearby trees caught fire. Alec knew that the fire could not spread much farther. The island was too barren of any real fuel. But right now the flames were devouring everything in sight. They roared and reached high into the air. There was nothing that Alec could do. The one thing he really needed his shelter was now gone, and there was no more wood. The fire burned a long time before it started to die down. Then the wind too began to diminish. Alec sat beside the spring, watching the flames, until the first streaks of dawn appeared in the sky. He blinked his smoke-filled eyes, gritted his teeth. He wasn't licked yet. He'd find some way to make a shelter. And if that was impossible, then he'd sleep outside like the black. Determinedly, he set out for the beach. Perhaps some wood had been swept ashore during the night. The black trotted ahead of him. Then Alex saw him snort and rear as he reached the top of the hill and plunged back down again. Alec hurriedly forward. From the crest of the hill he looked down. Below him was a ship anchored 400 yards off the island. He heard voices. He saw a rowboat being drawn up on the beach by five men. Incredulous, unable to shout, he rushed down the hill. You were right, Pat. There is someone on this island, he heard one of the men shout to the other. And the other replied in a thick Irish brog. Sure, and I knew I saw a fire reaching into the heavens. The End of Chapter 4 Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now, and be blessed.